I have always believed that teaching the next generation of woodworker is vital to the overall health and well-being of this amazing trade. Because of that, the Imagination Woodshop has partnered with industrial tech teacher, Mr. Adam Schmittendorf, on a series of short safety videos specifically designed to help the beginning woodworker. Our hope is that this information can help you be both successful and safe as you begin your woodworking journey. Enjoy. Hello again and welcome to the Spartan Wood and Metal Shop. Today's safety video, we're going to talk about our planer here. Whether it's a large industrial planer like ours or a simple lunchbox, smaller planer, operation and all of the setup is generally the same. Remember, general shop safety rules before we operate any piece of machinery, have our safety glasses on and safety shoes. Hearing protection and dust masks are always optional. This device is quite loud, so hearing protection is recommended. For a planer's operation, it's pretty much the same, so let's talk about how it actually works. We have our in-feed table and our in-feed side here. When a board is placed into it, a set of gear dogs will grab a hold of that board. As it feeds through, two hold down clamps will push down on the board as it begins to go into the cutting head. This cutting head has three rotating blades that spin in the opposite direction of how the board is going through. Therefore, our hold down bars are very, very important to keep that board from coming back out of the planer as it goes through. The very end is our final drive roller as it exits the planer. With our planer, it can accept a board of a minimum length of 12 inches. For our shop, I prefer our boards to be 16 inches or longer, even though it can hold a 12 inch board. For that, simply place a piece of wood up. If it is longer than our red tape, that piece of wood is good to go through our planer. Now that we went through wood that can go through the planer in terms of its length, let's talk about materials that cannot go through our planer. One of them would be plywood. Plywood's easy to distinguish by the lamination on the side. The next you would think would go through, it meets our size requirement, would be an ingrain cutting board. One of it, the planer will struggle with ingrain as it's the hardest part of the wood. In addition to, it is glued together. It can have a separation problem as it goes through the planer and blow parts back out of the end feed. The last one, any good piece of wood, we need to inspect it for any sort of defects. This would be areas where the wood is gonna come apart, shown here at the top staples, nails, screws, or any other piece of metal, as well as excessive amounts of glue. This board is also 14 and a quarter inches. It's too short to go through our planer, and so it is not a candidate for use. Now that we're ready to actually plane a piece of wood, we have our stock here that's gonna go through the planer. I have our push stick ready to go. Now we need to do a walk around. The first thing we need to do is engage the drive rollers by pushing down on our drive handle. Next thing we need to do is open our blast gate so that it's able to take wood chips from the planer. Next, we need to grab the material that we're going to plane. We need to measure the material at its thickest point. Here, as you can see, we measure at an inch and three quarters. With that, we are going to set the height of our planer to an inch of three quarters. We now need to raise our planer bed to that height. To do so, we're gonna unlock the lock knob. One full crank will raise up our planer bed a sixteenth of an inch. We can only safely take off a maximum of a sixteenth of an inch with this planer. After you have adjusted it to its proper height, we now lock it back down and we are ready to plane. Now that we are ready to plane our material, we need to remember our last safety steps. One, we never look directly into the machine, either the front or the rear. We never stand either in front, directly in front, or directly behind the machine. These are dangerous areas. We always need to stand off to the side, either the right or the left of our in and out feed tables to feed our materials. These are the safest places to be. When you load the piece of material, set it flat on the bed and support it at the back. One of the reasons I prefer that we run 16 inches or longer is that so as it catches, our fingers are not near this bed. If you are holding it here, it is going to slam it down on top of your fingers. We want our hands away from the planer bed as we load. Yeah. 
At this point, we have planed our first material and all the steps will be the steps that you are going to want to repeat each and every time you approach the planer. Always follow all safety rules and when in doubt, ask your instructor for help. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you.